If you're in the market for a new GPU and find that the RTX 5090 is a bit more than you need, Nvidia has unleashed its newest GPU, the RTX 5080. The little brother to the 5090, this card looks to bring 4K level performance using the latest generation of DLSS, but at a lower price tag. Did Nvidia do enough to convince users of older generation Nvidia cards to upgrade? Did it cut back performance too much over the 5090? And should you be cross shopping this with the 4090? With so many partner cards available, let's take a look at all of them and see how they all compare to the Founders Edition. And starting off with the 5080 Founders Edition, other than its badging, it's pretty much identical to the 5090. It's 30 centimeters long, 13 and a half centimeters high, and weighs in at 1635 grams. It doesn't have RGB, just an illuminated RTX logo, but it is the thinnest card in the lineup at only 40 millimeters wide. Next up is the Glax GeForce RTX 5080 One Click OC. This is also a pretty small card coming in at 30 by 13 and a half centimeters, is the lightest card at only 1308 grams, and while it is 10 millimeters thicker than the Founders Edition, it does include RGB in its lights. Next up on our list is the colorful GeForce RTX 5080 Vulcan OC. This is one of the larger cards in the test, measuring 36 centimeters long, 15 centimeters high, and tipping the scales at 2796 grams, more than double the weight of the Glax. For that extra weight though, you do get an extra HDMI port, a header for controlling your RGB lights, and a much more subtle RGB implementation. Next up we have the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 5080 Gaming OC. This card measures 34 by 14 centimeters, weighs 1823 grams, is 70 millimeters wide or a little over three slots, has a dedicated switch to go between its performance and quiet BIOS, and has RGB lights behind the fans and in the logo. Next up is the Zotac GeForce RTX 5080 Amp Extreme Infinity. The card comes in at 33 centimeters by 14 and weighs 2,161 grams. This card is 70 millimeters wide, includes a proprietary RGB header for controlling your lights, a button for switching between performance and silent BIOS, and does have the most aggressively rounded edges, which may help it fit into smaller cases. Next card we're taking a look at is the Pollet GeForce RTX 5080 GameRock OC. This card has an iridescent design that changes colors depending on the angle you're looking at it, measures in at 33 by 14 and a half centimeters, weighs 2200 grams, and is 70 millimeters wide. It does have a switch for changing in between the performance and the quiet BIOS, and a header for controlling its RGB. Next up is the Gainward GeForce RTX 5080 Phoenix GS. This card is on the smaller side, measuring only 33 by 13 centimeters, and weighing just 1595 grams. It's 60 millimeters wide, has a toggle for changing in between the performance and quiet BIOS, and an RGB header, though the only thing that's illuminated is the Phoenix logo. Next up is the first of two MSI cards, the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 Vanguard SoC. This is one of the longer cards at 36 centimeters by 15, weighs 1954 grams, is 67 millimeters wide, has a switch for going in between the performance and the quiet BIOS, and has RGB in the MSI logo. Moving over to our second MSI card, the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 Supreme SoC. This card measures the same 36 by 15 centimeters, but weighs 2639 grams, is 67 millimeters wide, so almost four slots, has RGB lights in the logo and by the fans, and while it has two BIOSes just like many other cards, it is the only one that defaults to silent. And finally, we have the ASUS GeForce RTX 5080 Astral OC. This is not the longest card, but overall it is the biggest at 35 by 15 centimeters, weighing 2,900 grams, and measuring 80 millimeters wide, so a full four slots. For that added size though, you do get all the bells and whistles from the other cards, such as having two fan controllers, adjustable RGB lights, and a BIOS toggle. All these cards use the same 12-pin connector for power. But how do they all perform? And first, taking a look at our test system, we are running an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D paired with an MSI X870E Carbon 
with 32 gigabytes of DDR5-6200 memory, all running on Windows 11 Professional with the latest press driver from NVIDIA. For more details on what we test and how we test, check out the links in the description for the full reviews. If you are in the market for one of these GPUs, you're probably looking for high refresh rates or high fidelity, so let's take care of the high fidelity first with 4K. All these charts are 100 percented to the RTX 5080 Founders Edition, so that'll be our benchmark going forward. And we can see that compared to the RTX 4080, the RTX 5080 is notably faster, with the last generation card only delivering 87% of the newer card's performance. That also rings true for the AMD RX 7900 XTX, with the RTX 4080 Super just inching past them and delivering 88%. But if you do want more performance than the Founders Edition can provide, you can get that from the partner cards. And starting us off is the MSI 5080 Supreme, which is good for 2% extra performance. The Galax One Click OC is good for 3% extra performance. The MSI Vanguard and Gigabyte Gaming OC both deliver 4% additional performance. And the Zotac Amp Extreme, Colorful Vulcan, Gain Word Phoenix, and Paulette Game Rock all deliver an extra 5% in performance. That does leave the ASUS Astral as the fastest partner card in this test, and is 6% faster overall than the 5080 Founders Edition. One thing the Astral doesn't have is more performance than the RTX 4090. The older flagship still delivers 13% better performance than the 5080 Founders Edition, which, for those keeping track at home, means the RTX 5090 is a whopping 52% faster. But what does this mean in terms of raw performance? Well, depending on the partner card, the RTX 5080 is good around 100 FPS when gaming at 4K, which is a very strong result, but the RTX 4090 does deliver 109 FPS, with the RTX 5090 in another category altogether at 147 FPS. If you are looking for a high refresh rate experience on the RTX 5080, at least without DLSS, you would be able to achieve that by going down to 1440p. That would boost all the 5080s to above 160 FPS, but the gaps between the 5080 and the 4080 do get a bit closer. The 4080 Super is now able to deliver 91% of the performance of the 5080 Founders Edition, with the vanilla 4080 coming at 90% and the AMD RX 7900 XTX at 89%. The gaps between the partner cards though remains basically the same, with the MSI 5080 Supreme coming in at 2% faster, and at 1440p, the fastest partner card was again the ASUS Astral. All of 5080s though do gain a little bit on the RTX 4090, which is now 12% faster than the Founders Edition, with the RTX 5090 maintaining its commanding lead, still being 37% faster. When focused in on just the 1% lows though, all of these cards were able to achieve over 131 FPS at all times, so all of these cards are able to produce a very good experience at this resolution with max quality settings. But if you needed even more performance, you could of course drop down to 1080p, or perhaps better yet, use upscaling from 1080p to a higher resolution. Playing at this resolution though does introduce a lot of CPU bottlenecks, even with the 9800X3D, which does make the Gen over Gen increases for the 5800 a little less pronounced. The AMD RX 7900 XTX is good for 90% of the 5800 Founders Edition, the 4080 is good for 93%, with the 4080 Super coming in just a bit above that at 94%. By and large, the performance gains from using a partner card haven't really diminished at 1080p, with the MSI Supreme and Galax one-click OC being 2% faster, the MSI Vanguard coming in at 3% faster, the Pollock Game Rock, Gainward Phoenix, Colorful Vulcan, and Gigabyte Gaming OC are all 4% faster, with the ASUS Astral maintaining its strong showing at 5% faster. That puts it a bit closer, but still just a bit slower than the RTX 4090, which is 11% faster than the 5080 Founders Edition, with the RTX 5090, which is running into some CPU bottlenecks, still managing to be 24% faster. Enabling ray tracing doesn't really change the order of things, though the increased demand on the GPU does boost the relative performance of the RTX 5090 and RTX 4090. The relative performance of the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super does increase by a little bit, up to 94 and 95% of the 5080 Founders Edition. But really the only big change in performance is from the RX 7900 XTX, which is now down to only 68% of the performance of the RTX 5080. 
So the performance of the RTX 5080 has been strong, but not necessarily life-changing or mind-blowing, especially if you already have a RTX 4080 or above. Does power consumption do anything to change that? Well, it is a bit faster than the RTX 4080, and it uses a bit more power. The Founders Edition does come in at 325 watts, which is a bit below the RTX 3080 from two generations ago, but still a bit above the RTX 4080 at 304 watts and the RTX 4080 Super at 302. Not very surprising, at least on the face of it, but what is probably more surprising is that the MSI 5080 Supreme, which is a bit faster than the Founders Edition, did use less power while doing so. We're not sure what magic MSI used on the Supreme cards, but it didn't use it on the Vanguards, with that card coming in at 352 watts. Most of the other cards are bundled right around there, with the Pollet 5080 Game Rock using 346, the Galax One Click OC at 350, the Gigabyte Gaming OC coming in at 358, the Gain Word 5080 Phoenix at 361, and the Colorful Vulcan at 367 watts. That does leave the Zotac Amp Extreme at 371 and the Asus Astral at 388 as the most power hungry of all the partner cards, though even those cards are a bit below the RTX 4090 and positively tame compared to the RTX 3090 Ti and RTX 5090, which uses 587 watts. Since the bump in the RTX 5080's power consumption is also coupled with a bump in performance, how does that change its overall efficiency? The least efficient card is the Asus Astral, which comes in at 4.1 watts per frame, which is in good company since it is tied with the RTX 4070 Super and just below the RTX 5090 and RTX 4090. The Zotac Amp Extreme and Colorful Vulcan both use 4 watts for every frame they produce, which is tied with the RTX 4080 Super and RTX 4080. But we can get even more efficient from there, since every other card is able to exceed the efficiency of the RTX 4080 Super, with the Gigabyte RTX 5080 Gaming OC coming in at 3.9 watts, which is tied with the Gain Word Phoenix. The MSI Vanguard and Galax One Click OC both needed just 3.8 watts. The Founders Edition and the Pilot Game Rock only needed 3.6 which leaves the most efficient card on this list, the MSI RTX 5080 Supreme, using only 3.5 watts per frame. So all the cards are pretty efficient, but how do they handle heat dissipation? Starting off with the loudest card, that would be the Zotac RTX 5080 Amp Extreme, coming in at 38.6 dBA. This is quieter than the reference editions of the RTX 3080, 5090, and 2080 Ti, but it's still on the loud side, though you do have the option of enabling the quiet BIOS. Next up is the Gigabyte 5080 Gaming OC at 38.4 dBA, the Gain Word Phoenix at 37.4, the Pollet Game Rock at 37.3, and the 5080 Founders Edition at 36.8 dBA. From here, next up, we have the Asus Astral at 36.3, the Galax One Click OC at 35.6, the Gain Word in its quiet BIOS, the MSI Vanguard at 35 dBA, followed by the Colorful Vulcan at 34.4, and the Colorful Vulcan again at 34.1 in its quiet BIOS, so not that much quieter. Followed by the Zotac with its quiet BIOS, the Pollock Game Rock with its quiet BIOS, and the Gigabyte Gaming OC in its quiet BIOS. But for those who have seen our 5090 video, the quietest card should be no surprise, and it's the MSI 5080 Supreme at 25.5. The Asus Astral and its quiet BIOS does get close at 25.8, as well as the other MSI card, the Vanguard, in its quiet BIOS, and even the MSI Supreme in its performance BIOS is quieter than pretty much every other card at 31.4 dBA. Though that story does flip a little bit when we lock everything to 35 dBA and 360 watts, with the other MSI card now in the lead, the Vanguard at 58.8C, showing it does have a very similar, if not slightly better cooler than the Supreme, which comes in at 59.5. And the colorful Vulcan coming in between them at 59.3. The Asus Astral is just behind them at 61.2, and then we have the Pollock Game Rock, the Galax One Click OC, Gigabyte Gaming OC, and the Zotac Amp Extreme, all delivering very similar results right around 65 degrees C. 
The gain word Phoenix comes in just above them at 66.7, but by far the hottest card has to be the 5080 Founders Edition at 72.9. And quickly taking a look at overclocking performance, all of these cards were able to achieve roughly the same performance gains from overclocking, with us able to achieve an extra 10 to 12% over stock, which is a good showing and in some cases might allow you to hit 40 90 levels of performance. But what really matters is how these cards compare in terms of value. And starting off at the bottom of the chart, we can see that the worst value 5080, the ASUS RTX 5080 Astral, is a better value than the RTX 4090, though the current 4090 price is a bit inflated, so it might be much more similar if it was at MSRP. That being said, the ASUS Astral is the fastest 5080 you can get at stock. It does have a good cooler, and when using the Quiet BIOS, it is one of the quietest cards we've tested. And as we can see with this comparison, it is worth about $100 more than the RTX 5080 Founders Edition. The problem with that being the expected price is $500 more. Moving up our list, we do have a conglomerate of partner cards, each of them bringing more value than the RTX 5090, and they are roughly in line with the Founders Edition if it was priced at $1,200. The colorful RTX 5080 Vulcan should retail for around $1,300, and was one of the fastest cards we've tested, and did have the second best cooler. The MSI RTX 5080 Supreme, on the other hand, was a bit slower than the colorful, but does have a very good cooler, is $50 cheaper than the colorful, and was the most efficient card with the best fan curve. The MSI RTX 5080 Vanguard, on the other hand, is $20 cheaper than its bigger brother, but it does run a little bit faster at stock, and while it is a bit louder at stock, it does have a better cooler overall. The Zotac RTX 5080 Amp Extreme retails for $1,250, and was one of the fastest cards overall, and does have a pretty good cooler. The Gigabyte RTX 5080 Gaming OC is very similar to the Zotac, with a very similar cooler, and while it's not quite as fast, it is $50 cheaper at $1,200. Next up is the Poly RTX 5080 Game Rock, which has very similar performance to the Gigabyte and the Zotac, while also delivering a very similar cooling performance, and with its iridescent design, is the most different looking out of all the cards tested. The Gainward RTX 5080 Phoenix is up next, which also delivered a very solid boost in performance over the Founders Edition, and while it might not have the best cooler of the partner cards, it is $50 cheaper than most of these. And now we come to the MSRP cards, starting off with the RTX 5080 Founders Edition at $1,000. This card is pretty much the smallest of all the cards we have tested, and while it does have the weakest cooler and the weakest performance, it's still a solid value compared to pretty much everything else, and you can see it's the same value as the RTX 4070 Ti Super, and even low cards such as the RX 7600 XT. The biggest reason not to pick the Founders Edition is because the Galax RTX 5080 one-click OC exists. It is a faster card at the same MSRP of $1,000, has a better cooler overall, and while it's not quite as thin as the Founders Edition, it is still one of the smallest cards we've tested. It may not have the same industrial design charm as its NVIDIA counterpart, but if you can find it at MSRP, it is the best value of all the 5080 cards that we've tested, and one of the best value NVIDIA cards that you can buy.